Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and every now and then I'll talk about something totally unrelated to the news and unrelated to immigration and just, you know, just a heart to heart talk with my subscribers. And today um, it is related to coronavirus in the sense that the, the impact of the lockdown, but it's to do with those of us who are parents and whose pet par- and whose children do not live in the same household and what it feels like when they come to visit well if they if you allow them to visit and you cannot touch them you cannot hold them unless you're rebellious and you don't care but there again your instinct as a parent will either say to you i need to protect my children or my grandchildren, and I need to protect myself. So you obey the regulations and you don't get close to them. And how that makes you feel. How does it make you feel if your child calls you up and say, look, mum, I want to see you. I just want to see your face. And you're very tactile and you cannot touch your child. And they'll say, well, I'll leave flowers outside the door or I won't come close to you. Some people, you know, from a child's point of view, they might think that that's enough just to see your face. But from a parent's point of view, you know, you, it can be really heart-wrenching. And I was talking to, well, we was having one of our peer group meetings online. That's how we have, to have them now. We was having one of our peer group meetings and we were talking about how we were coping with the lockdown because... Um, sometimes it, there's things that you can tell some people and you don't feel comfortable telling others. So I was having this peer group meeting and one of the women was saying, you know, the hardest thing for me is when my children want to see me and I have to say no. And she says, I say no and her t- eyes were welling up. She says, I say no because I can't bear to see them and I can't hug them. She says, I'm a very touchy-feely person. I'm a very huggy-huggy person. And the thought of having, seeing my children outside my house and I can't run out of there and hold them, she said it's too much. And now she's one of those people who have received one of those letters. You know, she's a kind of a stringent, she has to obey the stringent social distancing. So it's in between those who are not allowed to leave their house for 14 weeks and those who um, can leave their house, you know, to do exercise. She's kind of in between. I'm not quite sure how that works, but she has got low immune system or whatever they call it. Anyway, she had one of those letters. But what I'm saying is that she is in that category that she really needs to be careful because if she does catch it, she would need to be on a ventilator. So for her, it's even worse. I know um, last week, um, my daughter said to me, you know, I want to pick up, you know, I had a printer that I'd never used. And I said to her, you know, she needed it for her schoolwork. And I said she could pick it up because she's a teaching assistant. So she said, don't worry, I won't come. I won't come in. You can put it outside the front door. And I know how that made me feel. To put the printer outside the front door and wave to her from a window. And I thought to myself, I don't think I can do that. So I considered that my garden is long enough that we're six metres, well, two metres apart. And so I put the, um, I put the printer on one chair and then I positioned the chair the chairs around the garden so they were all separate because my two grandchildren were coming as well and at least we were in proximity and I felt you know quite safe you know she doesn't live too far but at the same token I kind of thought to myself you know is it okay I was still a bit worried still a bit concerned 
But at the same token, I thought, well, at least it's not as bad as not seeing them at all. And I think for parents, I think this part of the lockdown is the most hardest part. And I remember when they were leaving, and my grand, uh, my grandchild, my granddaughter said, "I want to hug Nan Nan," and her mother said, "You can't, you can't." And she goes, "I don't care, I don't care." And my grandson, I mean, he's sixteen. He said the same thing, but the thing is, is that it is so difficult. And I think, I don't know how many of you feel like that. Maybe you live with your children, so it won't really apply. But for, for children who do not live with their parents, it's really, really difficult. My mum lives in London. She's, she's not um, got any, um, like a smartphone or anything. So I can't see you on Facebook. You know, you kind of see these adverts on the TV with, people's Facebook but I mean she's 93 she's not gonna she's not gonna be doing that it would have to be my brother setting it all up for her and I don't think he's he's there yet so yeah so I just thought you know these are the little things that affect people that make people feel depressed that make people feel upset and that woman who was telling me she was near to tears when she was it wasn't just me she was explaining it to all of us. And another lady, she was saying the same thing. So it affects a lot of people. And it's one of those areas that's not talked about much. So I thought I would put it out there. And if you feel the same way as I do, if you have children and you can't touch them or you can't see them, or you feel as though you can't because of you've got underlying symptoms and it would be dangerous for them and it would be dangerous for you to hug them and hold them and that's what you're used to doing before the coronavirus came around, you know, share your feelings in the description below because it's it's nice to know that we're not alone in this, especially in this particular area. And the same, if this isn't just a female thing, you know, I was talking to a 25-year-old man and he said, you know, he was telling me that his mother was coming um, to give him some, you know, some cake and stuff, you know, because she lives quite, well, she doesn't live a, a quite a way away, but she lives, you know, a, about a mile and a half away. But she was coming to see him and they were going to meet in the garden. I said to him, did you hug her? And he says, no, I didn't. He said, you know, we did the, the fist, you know, uh, the virtual fist. So they were apart but they put the hand up like they were fisting, you know, knocking hands like this. But they weren't actually touching. But that was about as near as they got. And I said to him, how did it make you feel? And he said, you know, it was really, really weird. It was really difficult because, you know, like him, you know, he usually gives his mum a hug. You know, she's made him a nice cake and she's made him, you know, some food to eat and he can't hug her and say thank you mum you have to kind of do that virtual acknowledgement so men are feeling it this isn't just a female thing this is a human thing a human thing where when you're when you are that type of person who wants to hug and who is affectionate but you're afraid of catching or not only catching because sometimes People will even think, oh, I don't care. But then you care about the other person that you love or that person that's in your life. So you say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get in close proximity. I'm not going to risk it. So it's kind, it's a weird situation to be in because that part of you that would like to rebel and say, F it, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, nothing can stop me from hugging my mum. Nothing can stop me from hugging my children. It's not about that anymore, is it? It's about, if I do this, am I putting my loved ones at risk? And that is what is difficult about this. It's really, really difficult. So, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. And um, thank you for listening. I look forward to your comments. Bye-bye.